stop overthinking your character creation in Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is a phenomenon of a game. I can entirely sink into the world around the Sword Coast. One thing that can be distracting though, we all spent way too much time building the perfect adventurer who ever wandered in the Forgotten Realms. But isn't that part of the fun you ask? Yes, but will you lose the game if your hero is not the best of the best? No. Or will you lose maybe something even more important, like your fun? Let's talk about creating characters in Baldur's Gate 3 and ultimately for a Dungeons & Dragons game. Finally, I'll tell you how I choose my character and oh boy, you will be disappointed. Since I have not finished the game or reached level 12 yet, this will be based on the official Dungeons & Dragons player handbook Larian used almost everything out of it with very few exceptions and additions. So we are going to talk about the class and why every single one of them is good and useful, but also what you could be lacking playing those. Will you be able to tell me which class is useless or completely unplayable at the end? Let's find out and start with my personal favorite, the Barbarian. Once upon a time in the year 2022, there was a group of adventurers that wanted to uncover the mysteries around the mines of Fendelver. Before those mighty heroes could slay goblins, talk to banshees and hunt for mages, they had to choose which class they are playing. Captain Collins, completely new to this adventure that is played with just a simple pen and a sheet of paper, chose to be a barbarian. The pros of a Barbarian are pretty simple. I mean, you are using a lot of different weapons. You have the almost the entire list that you can choose from. It's a great melee and ranged weapon class. It highly relies on those weapons. You can wear good armor and also shields, but it's also a great two-handed character. And a Barbarian is strong and that's like your advantage on the battlefield sometimes because you're so strong you can just simply throw stuff around or people or goblins or whatever. <laughs> and Rage, oh my god, Rage is awesome for getting an advantage and resistance in fights. Advantage means you can roll two dice, the higher one counts. Resistance means you get like only half the damage rounded down, which is awesome. The cons of this class are pretty obvious. You have absolutely no spells. And although it's easy to play, it feels a little bit dull and there are no surprises later on. Like I said, you are really focusing down on weapons, but therefore you can use like a lot of them and have a lot of variety there. Could be fun to play them, but anyway, move on with the next class that is absolutely not dull in those dialogues, and that's the Bard. The Bard has got a gigantic amount of options in dialogues because of all the proficiencies that they are gaining and also just simply the Bard and then on top of that your race and then on top of that, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can, you can talk about because basically that's your proficient. Although you would not suggest that but the bard does also have a high variety of weapons that you can use actually and on top of that you gain a very useful skill set while traveling like for example religion or insight that will give you a lot of checks that are going into your favor when you're traveling around the world also your proficiency bonus are pretty high compared to all the other classes but not only that you can use that many weapons you can also use a lot of offensive spells which is kind of new to me, if I'm honest, because I haven't seen like that kind of class that offensive before and I'm really, really enjoying it. And also on top of that, you can heal and strengthen your allies, which is really cool. And on top of that, you can weaken your enemies. So the Bard is a very, very versatile class. The cons for a bard are of course that they can only wear light armor and they are pretty low on hit points. So you don't want to be in the front row. Even you could use all these melee weapons, right? One con that I encountered is that you miss out on fights in Baldur's Gate 3 just because you're that good in talking. You can say this is a con, you can say this is a pro. Uh, I just put it into the cons right now because, you know, well, I like I like I like a good fight. 
Moving on to the cleric. The cleric is, depending on its subclass, able to wear heavy armor, which is really cool. The cleric is very highly customizable with a lot of a lot to choose and that's by the way also a con at the same time because you have seven domains from choose uh, from and then you have 21 deities to choose from so gods basically that you are worshiping there's a lot of stuff you need to know or to think about when you are building a cleric the cleric is a good support class with its own damage spells like really good damage spells like for example the guiding bolt which is a 4d6 damage spell extremely good on top of that the cleric is a great healer if you choose the life domain it's even better the cleric can be good in animal handling with nature domain so you have to choose between you want to go with the healer you want to go uh, animal handling and there are even more domains from choose from those are only two of them uh, one of them would be the war domain which uh, makes the cleric to a war priest and then you can even attack as a bonus action, which is really, really nice. Another few cons for the Cleric are that it's very limited amount with weapon classes. So you cannot choose that many weapons you are proficient in. And also they're lacking a variety in spells. So the spells that the Cleric got are not that high in number. So you can't choose from that as many as in other uh, spell casting classes. And the next spellcasting class is the Druid. The Druid, what's the pro of the Druid? Of course, shapeshifting. Shapeshifting from second level on, you can get into different forms. Those forms are becoming uh, more and more useful the higher you get into ranks. The Druid is also very good if with anything related with animals. So that's really nice if you're into that. And in Baldur's Gate 3, you have a lot of interaction with other animals so that can be a advantage on top of that you can also shape shift into an elemental later at level 10 when you are going druid only and not multi-classing we're not going to talk about multi-classing right now the next thing that's also really cool is that you can choose from eight different circles at second level and customize your druid even further and make it like the thing that you want to play a con for druid is that there are limited benefits during level ups. So you have nothing at levels 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 where you only get a little bit of HP and nothing else. On top of that you're also limited with the amount of weapons of course again. Only those fighter classes really are advanced in a lot of proficiencies with weapons. Druid is not one of them. One thing that you need to keep in mind, when you're in your animal form, you are not able to spellcast. So either you choose spellcasting or you choose to be like, I don't know, a bear and do stuff that bears do, right? Next one, fighter. Very proficient in most weapons and armors. So the fighter is there to use weapons in the game. It's your choice for a weapon using all-rounder, basically. And what's really cool is that you can, on top of that, use a fighting style or get a fighting style that allows you to advance even in a specific playstyle that you would like to. Like, for example, if you want to go into archery or if you want to go with two weapons, so there you can also advance into those playstyles. The fighter even can learn some basic spells when you choose the Eldritch Knight later at level three you can do some basic uh, attack spells which is really nice because sometimes you're getting dragged into a fight in Baldur's Gate 3 where you are not as close as you would like to be and then you only have like your bow or maybe your crossbow whatsoever but with an Eldritch Knight you also have the ability for example to cast a Firebolt. The fighter does like a few other classes get extra actions and attacks during leveling, which also is a very good pro for a fighter. What's the downside of a fighter? Well, basically you are only getting very, very few surprises during leveling. So there is not that much variety in that class and you are focused really on fighting and you are limited in choosing other options, not only in a fight, where you can only basically use your weapons and if you're an eldritch knight you can use some basic spells 
and then you were also limited in dialogues into more of those uh, more of those aggressive options you know just saying that you're a little bit limited nothing that the bard couldn't do for example next one the monk really cool completely unique class if you ask me gains a lot of features during leveling so it keeps being interesting even when you level up there are a lot of things that are you you're getting and a lot of things that you need to read and and learn and and uh, make use of it it is a completely different playstyle with the key abilities so you have these key points that you can spend on uh, on anything fighting related and what's really cool is that you can attack multiple times when you're using monk weapons and or unarmed uh, strikes so there are some abilities where you can attack with a monk weapon that will be like a, a club or a quarter staff and then you can do an extra attack unarmed on top of that and even strike someone else if you want to one downside for the monk is although the monks are able to wear light armor and shields it's definitely more beneficial to wear absolutely no armor because your armor class is being calculated as 10 plus your dexterity modifier and since you are very high in dexterity with a monk you get a higher armor class just by wearing just simply nothing you can just walk around naked if you want to i mean that's, that's a possibility in border skate 3. <clears throat> and if you run out of key and that happens like pretty fast then you are being vulnerable also pretty fast paladin one of the one of the cool class i think that paladin is one of the one of the interesting classes you can use big weapons you can use shields you have heavy armor and you can all use that very, very easily so you're like the tank on the battlefield and on top of that you're great at supporting your group not only through active spells but also just simply through aura so you want to keep your group around the paladin so that the entire group benefits from all the auras from that paladin which then sometimes can make the group also more vulnerable to things like fireball or exploding barrels or whatsoever another pro is also the divine smite which is a gigantic damage boost if you're hitting an enemy and you want there is an enemy you want to hit like really hard you have that divine smite you can cast on top of your successful hit that brings even more damage down to that enemy and the paladin also has really interesting options uh, for role playing due to all the oaths you you can choose from and then making your paladin some kind directed into a into a specific path and you have to follow that and and there will be very interesting interactions with the people in the world Though the Paladin is a spellcaster, it's not the best spellcaster, so you're limited in the variety of your spellcasting. And also, the higher levels don't offer that much improvement. You gain, like, ability points, but that's really it. So there's also not that much uh, to, to improve on. So a Paladin sounds like a class that you either multi-class early on with, or you can multi-class two later in the game to get like some of those um, really nice benefits from it. Ranger, a very good mix of a fighter, a rogue and a little bit of a druid. So you have like all of these styles a little bit together. And at second level you even gain a fighting style which makes your ranger more advanced in, in one direction. You can go like archery or defense. You can go into dueling or you can go with two weapons so it's really really cool although you are like i said a little bit of a druid you only have like a small amount of druid spells but that's actually a benefit because you're a fighter with some spells so that's really really nice and on top of that ranger the only class where you can have a companion companions are gained at third level so pretty early on and well if you don't want to run around yourself then uh, Take a ranger and have your have your buddy with you all the time. The ranger is a little bit of everything. So the downside is you're not going to be specialized in anything. That can be, well, a bummer because other classes are superior in like spellcasting. Other classes are superior in fighting. You are not really somewhere. You're stuck in the middle. Uh, so you can't be really a, let's say, champion in anything. The next and the last class that is some kind of melee is the rogue. 
The rogue is sneaky and really good to avoid unnecessary attention or for stealing things, you know, really nice. Not very useful in a battle, but outside in the world when you're playing on the world map and stuff and exploring, that's really, really nice. What's cool is that if you are going the way as an arcane trickster, you can even learn some wizard spells on top of that. So that's really nice. Although in Baldur's Gate 3, we will never going to get to the level that you can get usually in Dungeons and Dragons to level 20, where you could then also steal magic. What the rogue, what an arcane trickster rogue could actually do. The rogue does provide very interesting roleplay elements and also, well, access to some locked areas here and there where you couldn't get into when you don't have the abilities. The rogue does not have that much customization as it maybe sounded like just right now. It's a little bit squishy and also uh, some kind of a glass cannon so you can have some good attacks especially if you are the first one to attack but then you can also only take small weapons so you have your trickery you have your special abilities once you are in a in a real big fight and there are a lot of enemies and so on you don't you have a disadvantage with your rogue being in your in your uh, party and then on to the spell casting class is really cool sorcerer is the first one you have a lot of offensive spells with a sorcerer really nice uh, in a fight and on top of that you can go into magical chaos with wild magic that you could choose from and i need to show you a page wild magic is basically you roll a d100 and you have like a lot of things happening here in the player's book there you see the entire page the entire page is all uh, all wild magic stuff there can there can happen a lot of stuff if you roll a 45 or 46 you cast leviate on yourself 99 to 100 you regain all expended sorcery points and so there's a lot of stuff happening. There's so much stuff in wild magic. What's also cool as a sorcerer is you can be a dragonborn without actually being a dragonborn. And therefore you just simply choose the Draconi bloodline. What's cool is about the sorcerer, a little bit unique, is the sorcery points that uh, can cr either create spell slots if you need more, or you spend those sorcery points to make your spells better. What are the downsides? Well, it's caster, you are squishy, you have really low health, and you cannot really have big armors and it's really not beneficial for you. And you're also only relying on your spellcasting. Melee weapons are not really a thing for you. Uh, ranged weapons are also not really a thing for you. You can't even use that many. And one more thing about the sorcerer, you cannot learn new spells through scrolls, which you can with a different class. Before that, we're talking about the warlock. The warlock is a very cool for role-playing. You have really cool role-play features, like, for example, telepathy or the fey presence. Fey presence is where you can charm or frighten the humanoids that are around you, so this is kind of cool for role-playing reasons. The warlock is also the easiest to use caster without any surprises, although with eldritch invocations, also a kind of unique thing, you can alter use spell, your spells and make them work better. But you can choose which one you want, not like with the wild magic from the sorcerer. No, here you can choose if what should be uh, altered from your spells. But you don't have that many spell slots, so that's a downside of the warlock. Again, this is a spellcaster, you are limited to spellcasting, you don't have that many spell slots. You see the problem? Wizard, the last one, massive spellcaster, can learn basically every single spell when there's a scroll for it. Wizards are more intellectual, they can learn their stuff, they don't need to rely on senses or, or bloodlines or whatsoever. No, they just simply learn, sit down and learn from scrolls. So you do have a huge pile of magic spells available for you, that's great. There are basically no limitations in the spell classes that a wizard can use and you can memorize more spells than the other spellcasters so you do have more variety of spells available at your hand during a fight to react to specific things happening. 
here again, you are limited to spellcasting because there's only spellcasting. And again, you have low health, you only have maximum light armor. And not like the other spellcasters, you cannot really advance in your spellcasting or advance the spells that much in your spellcasting. So you are bound to just the normal effects from spells without any improvements. So tell me if you have found the class that is unplayable in Baldur's Gate 3 or any Dungeons & Dragons game. Oh, and before I forget that, uh, remember that you wanted to know how I got my character together? Well, after reading all about the classes, everything that I just showed you, uh, their spells and traits, I had a good idea what I didn't want it to play. So that was Barbarian, Fighter, Cleric and, and Wizard. They were out of question because I already played the Barbarian and pen and paper and I didn't want to do that. The remaining classes were great and I thought already about multi-classing them. Well, and then Dusty Monk, a very engaged viewer of mine, literally bought my first ever playthrough as a bard. So here I am, Baldric, the Elfin Bard, ready to uncover the truths under and around Baldur's Gate. Join me on my journey and see you the next time. Bye-bye.